Question 3. Spreadsheet. Alright, so we have to use formula and functions for all calculations in the spreadsheet. Only use absolute cell references where it's necessary when you copy them down in the same column or copy them left or right. Um, insert formula and functions in such a manner that the correct results will still be obtained even if changes are made to the existing data. This is very important. And should you need to use building blocks, use the allocated space in the spreadsheet. I'll show you one example of how you can do it in building blocks and how we can do it just all in one cell. Right, so open the three A-line spreadsheet that contains data about employees working at an airline and work in the data worksheet. Right. 3.1. Rename the data worksheet to employee data and change the tab color to any color of your choice. So we rename and right click tab color and make it something bright so that it's easy to mark um, if you use like one of these faded colors it's quite difficult to mark so something bright is easy to see then we don't have to add an extra tab to see it clearly 3.2 make the following changes to row 1 merge and center cells a1 to n1 let's do that first a1 to N1, merge and center. Okay. Shade the merged cell with one shade lighter as the color of the cells in row two. So now we have to go click on one of these and check what color they've used. All right, so it's this one. So one shade lighter will be that one. Right, so it's that one, there you go. And then lastly, Add the heading Riverland Airport or Riverland Airport. Right, Riverland Airport. Okay. 3.3. Use a spreadsheet feature in row 2 to allow the data to appear over two lines. Okay, so they say in row two, so we can't just do it on the cells that we see that it's necessary. We have to do it for the whole row two. So use your cursor to select the entire row here from the number. And then to appear over two lines will have to be wrap text. Okay, I know some of these will be over three lines, but that's just how it is. Okay, 3.4. Insert a function in cell F3 to determine the current age of the employee on the 31st of December of the current year. Right, now this was a tricky one, but if you actually look at the data clearly, it's not that difficult. So in cell F3, we need to determine the current age of this employee on the De December the 21st of the current year. All right. So I think that's the thing that threw most of the people is like, how do you get the age on the 31st of December? Now, the whole thing is that we're basically taking the whole year. We're not just taking today's date. Um, we're just taking like the maximum of this year. So instead of just doing today, okay, the normal function, which would give us, I'm just going to convert this to date just to show you which would give us the 10th of October. We actually want the end of the year. Um, and we, we don't have to add days or changes to the end of the year. We just want the year of today. We don't want the whole, the dates in the month as well. We just need the year of today because they gave us just the year of this person's birthday. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to extract the year of today because remember serial number is a date okay a date format so the year of today let me just change this back to general see is 21 2021 so 2021 minus the year that they were born in 
and there's their age. Okay. All right, so basically you just need to look at what they've given you. If they've given you a full date, a date with a month and a, and a day, um, then you can use just today minus their birth date, divide the whole lot between uh, two, between uh, two, with 365 and round the whole lot. That's a whole normal procedure. But um, they just gave us the year. That means we just need to extract the year from today's date. Okay, just look at what they gave you. All right, now, and don't go and use the birthday now. This, this question just counts three marks. If you if you had to use the birthday, like the month and the date as well, that would be impossibly difficult. So just use what they what they gave you and look at the mark allocation. Now, 3.5. Here we're getting to one of the most difficult questions in the paper. The year of birth of an employee appears in column E, and the birthday of an employee appears in column G in the format. DD space MM. Okay, now I've got, I've got an issue with the paper here because it's actually not DD MM um, because it just gives us one month and one day if there's not a zero proceeding. But there's always a space in between the two. So I can quickly test and see how the functions would handle that. So we're going to check that just now. Okay, insert a date function in combination with other functions in cell H3 to display the birth date of an employee in the format year, year, month, month, day, day. Okay, ensure the birth date is in a date format. So basically what we need to do is we need to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Okay, and we've got these three together. So this is the day, this is the month, that's the year. So. I'm going to do this in building blocks so that I can show you how to use building blocks. I've just moved my screen over a little bit. So let's just see if we can extract just the day from the birthday here. So I'm just going to say um, left because we actually ex just want to extract the first two characters. Hey, and I want to see what it's going to do if I, if I use it on the next cell. So I'm going to say left of this text and the number of characters will be two. Okay, so that first one works well. And if I go there, okay, it works. It just extracts one, like it doesn't move into the 12. So I think I can just use left two, that works fine. And then the same should work for the month. Um, so I'm going to use right and this text comma two. And let's see if that works. So that just gives me three. It puts a space in before that, but we'll see if that's going to cause a problem or not. Now, I just want to point out something to you. Because I'm working in rows, I'm actually putting these um, calculations in a row. I don't do, I don't go and put in right over here. Because if I had done that, I would not be able to copy it down. And they can actually penalize you for this, especially if it was a question that you did have to copy down. So please pay attention. You have to actually do it in the row so that it could be copied down um, if it's necessary to copy it down. So um, please pay attention to that. All right, so we're going to test that. So that seems to be working. Um, we've got the left and we've got the right. So basically what we did is we split these two. Now we have to add the them all together. So I've got the year, I've got the day, I've got the month separately. Now I'm going to use the date function. They said a date function, not the date function, but it's the date function that we want to use. Now, if we look at the function builder over here, it says the year that we have to enter here is an actual whole number. It's it's an integer number. It's not in a date format. So we can't put in a date format in the year argument it has to be a whole number so this is perfect that's exactly what, what we want to do we want to put in that year the month also has to be a whole number it has to be somewhere between 1 and 12 it can't be a whole date because remember a whole date is somewhere above 40,000 we saw that today's date is somewhere 44,700 and something something we can't put in that date 
that's too high a number. It just needs to be a number from 1 to 12. So the month is this column, hey? So that's Q3. The day is the number of the month from 1 to 31. That's the day of the month. And then that gives us the date in Microsoft Excel date time code. Do you see? And if we say OK, it actually puts those three together. Do you see it entered? It put the zero for the three automatically. And we can test if the rest, if it worked correctly. Let's see. It didn't tell us to copy down, but we can just check. The first um, day of the 12th month of 1999. Perfect. 28th day of the um, of August 1950. So that worked great. Okay, so that's what you had to do. Um, you could do it all in one argument and actually put in, instead of Q3 here, you would put in, um, uh, we had to extract the month. So that would be right of the birthday, comma, two. And uh, for P3, that was left of the birthday, comma, two. So that's what it would look like if you did it all in one. Okay. All right, people. Now, let me just quickly give you a quick overview. If you wanted to, when do you actually use the month function in the month argument? That's if I wanted to add a few months to this day. So I would say date of, let's quickly see, I would say the year of this date. Do you see it takes the whole date? I have to click on a date if I want to use the year function. And the month of this date then i can say plus 12 months for example if i want to add a year or if i want to add 15 months or however many let's say nine months someone's pregnant okay <laughs> for example um and day of this date format but the the day function in the day argument and the month function in the month argument and the year function in the year argument is actually only meant for when you're working with a day with a date format not if you're working with whole numbers okay right people let's hope that helped 3.6 an employee qualifies for a promotion if he or she has traveled more than 10 times so not 10 or more more than 10 times the number of times that each employee has traveled is in column M Insert a function in cell N3 to determine if an employee qualifies for a promotion. Display yes if they do and leave the cell empty if they don't. All right, so they, I think they use the word if like four times. All right, so by this time, if you don't know if it's an, that, that it's an if, then you really didn't read properly. <laughs> um, whenever there are two alternatives... Uh, output alternatives and you have to do some kind of test to determine what alternative to use then it's definitely an if um, when there are three four five alternatives then it's usually also an if but it could be a vlookup if they give you a table um, they haven't asked a question before we actually have to create the table yourself but I think they would actually suggest something like creating a table so if they just give you the possible outputs and you need to do some kind of test yourself for a few alternatives then it's an if so let's see this is a pretty straightforward if so um, the number of times they've traveled is in column M and we need to say if the so the logical test part has three parts it actually says what cell we need to test this is the cell and what are we testing it for did they travel more than 10 times okay now we've got a complete logical test so it's a cell that we're testing with an operator for some kind of value if the value is true the output should be uh yes okay then it should display yes if it is not true, then nothing should display. Right. Now, nothing, or the, to display nothing, you use two double quotation marks right up against each other, not a space in between them. If you put a space in between them, you can actually check if you use a count blank, it'll actually give you zero. It won't, it'll actually count that as a value. So there has to be nothing 
between the two double quotation marks. And don't forget the quotation marks around the yes if you typed it in yourself. And there you go. If they traveled more than 11 then or more than 10, then it displays a yes. Otherwise, it gives you nothing. They didn't ask us to copy it down. It's just nice to test it now and then. Right, all done with question three.